My grades are... I actually thought I was going to Melbourne. Hello everyone, I'm Jasmine and I'm a year 2 vet student. I mean, I'm transitioning to year 2 but yeah. Anyways, hello, I'm a year 2 vet student from Murdoch University in Perth, Australia. And yeah, here's my application journey for vet school. Okay, so let me just break down the video. It's kind of like a lecture series, okay? So the first step is the theoretical part of vet school application. I'm going to go through all the steps of applying for vet schools in general. And then I'm going to go through my journey, which is the practical aspect of it. And the last part will be my stats, which I think a lot of people will be interested in knowing because we don't really get much statistics from Singapore vet school students and what they have done to get into vet school. So hopefully it'll be informative. Don't hate on me. So now is the theoretical part of this video segment. How to apply for vet school. Step 1. Research and prioritize. Like in bouldering, research all the problems you have in the crack or in your gym and then prioritize what are the difficulty levels that you want to do. Bringing that concept into applying for vet school, prioritize what you want. Is it the financial cost of vet school? The quality of education you're going to get or the city and the pace of living and the style of living, if you will, in different vet schools and, and their locations. Contrary to popular belief, not all vet schools on the world ranking page are actually accredited in the different countries you want to practice. For example, uh, Murdoch University, I can practice in the US and in Australia and in Singapore. But if I went to Cambridge University, I cannot practice in the US because it's not accredited. I can, but I'll have to go through a lot more exams and acc accreditation procedures before I can go. So, yes, speaking of that, you can actually kickstart your research with the videos, shameless self plug, with the video that I posted on vet schools. I have explained in depth what is accreditation and the different vet schools that you can consider as a Singaporean. So the second step would be to actually prep your documents. So like in bouldering, you need to prep. You can't just climb barefoot because that will be uncomfortable for your feet and you probably cannot send the, your problem in your project. So like in bouldering, vet school application, you have to prep your documents. For example, your academic transcripts, your personal statements, your animal experience hours, letters of recommendation, and also like your interview questions, like what you want to ask the interview interviewers and what content you want to relay to your interview panel, things like that. Each school requires a different set of documents and information that they need from you. So yeah, you can check out a different school's website. Also in the description below. Yeah, not above, below. The third step would be to actually apply for vet school. So after you've narrowed down, you have researched and you have decided, okay, this is my top five or three schools that I want to apply to. You can either apply to them personally or you can approach an agent to apply for you. Particularly in Singapore, if you approach an agent to apply for you, a lot of the application fee is waived because universities will partner with education agencies to hook more international students into their school to earn money because that's how universities earn money from international students like us. Fourth and final step would be to actually choose your vet school. So for example, if you have you if you have the privilege of getting offers from different vet schools, now is your time to choose what vet school you want to go into because you can't possibly go into all of them. Or if um, unfortunately you don't get to either you got rejected from all your vet schools, don't fret, you can try again next year or the next cycle. The UK's application cycle is different from Australia cycle from United States cycle. I have seen in Reddit threads and in real life a lot of vet students that have tried multiple years in a row. I've met someone who have tried like three years in a row to get to vet school and on his third try they did get in so Alright now for this segment will be the practical segment so it's my journey and why I chose Murdoch in the end. So in February I got my A-level results I could start applying for Australian vet schools because I didn't apply for any UK ones. Second step of my journey was I'm a UC Davis reject, okay? <laughs> I got accepted into UC Davis uh, because I saw that it was a number one ranked vet school but as a postgraduate program. I was planning to go under their animal science major and then, you know, apply into their vet school but, you know, it didn't turn out because I got juked. I thought I would get a full ride scholarship, which I did not. And then in June to July, I started applying for my NUS concurrent degree program. You can check out my friend's video over here regarding this program. And I also started applying for Murdoch, which is my current school. I actually applied through an agent. It's not sponsored or anything, but yeah, I applied through IDP. They limited students to apply five schools. It was a five school limit, so I really had to boil down my options. So in the end, I actually boiled down to Massey, UK, University of Queensland, Murdoch, uh, University of Sydney, so four schools.
I ended up not applying for Massey because I met a vet from Massey. She said the, the pace of living was really really slow and everything was really quiet in that town so I decided to skip out of it. Got the offer from UQ to do their... I don't know what's that test but it's a... I think it's called Casper if I'm not wrong. Yeah, I got the offer from UQ but decided not to because UQ was uh, too expensive. And the Gatton campus where all vet students had to study in is too... It's too um, rural for my taste because I wanted, I prioritized train, being able to train in vet school. So yeah, there was no facilities at all besides like a swimming pool. There wasn't really a track scene, there wasn't really a sporting scene over there, so I decided not to go for UQ. Why I rejected Sydney? Sydney is a six year program and it's super expensive. Number one, living in the city, I did not want a city lifestyle in vet school, so it ruled out Sydney. Number two, with six years, I'm losing one year of my precious salary to make up for the debt I'm going to be in. Number three is the most expensive out of all the schools I've researched, so that was out of the cards for me. So yeah, so I ended up only fully going through the application for Murdoch and for the NUS concurrent program. So from August to November, I got notified that I'm accepted into the NUS concurrent degree program, which is partnered with University of Melbourne. So I actually thought I was going to Melbourne for vet school. But yeah, after one sem, I got really bad grades. My GPA did not really make the cut and I decided not to try my luck anymore. And I didn't really like what I was studying. Next few semesters that they have planned out for us, the modules got even more and more dreadful for me. I didn't really like computing, for example, so I decided to drop out of it. I mean, US dropout segue into. So actually, during my semester um, in NUS, I actually got Murdoch's offer that I can directly be admitted into their vet school program. So it was good news. I received it during my work. I was working and I received the SMS notification. And yeah, I was really happy. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to ditch. I'm going to ditch NUS and go for Murdoch since the cost kind of is like 10k more expensive. But I decided, like, come on, I'm just going to go for Murdoch instead. Because why not just jump straight into vet school instead of risking my chances of being in vet school with um, my NUS GPA. And that was my journey. Alrighty, so here will be my stats, my statistics question. What I use to get into vet school, basically. So I am a GCE A level student. My grades are AAA slash C. Please don't hate me. See, I have gotten you for my math all the way onto my A levels. I can show you like all the transcripts. Okay, I'm not kidding when I say I was struggling my studies. It was just by the stroke of luck. God like took my hand and gave me a miracle. I got the grades that are good enough to apply for vet school. What I did for my A levels to get this like weird grade was to get a scolding from my chemistry teacher, Mrs. Teo. <laughs> Before I went overseas for a competition, she basically scolded me that I am not focusing because I got straight U's and S for my mid-semester mid exam. Yeah, and she was really worried that I'm not going to pass my A-levels. Um, a lot of teachers actually kind of discouraged me from going to the overseas competition, which, yeah, now that I think of it, yeah, it's, it's really wise of them to say that, but I did not listen. During that competition, I was really motivated to, you know, study and stop messing around with my grades because ultimately, I have a dream to achieve. Basically, I woke up at 5 a.m. every day. So after my competition, I rested really well for my comp the few days leading up to my competition. But after that, even though I slept at like 3 a.m., I woke up, I tried to wake up at 5 a.m. to you know, get my things done and to start doing a lot of practice papers whenever I'm not going off to the track to support our teammates. So as much free time as I had, I squeezed it out and studied. Yeah, that was kind of a turning point for me to focus and to just whack this revision process. And then after I came back, I kind of stopped training for a while. I just studied every day for like the entire day. I don't know how I did it, but I just did practice papers and after practice papers, after practice papers. And use the Pomodoro Tomato app, which really helped me for my revision that time. The active recall process when you keep getting things wrong and then you correct it and then you see it in another exam question and then you're like, aha, I know how to do that. So that process really helped me to solidify my concepts as an A-level student. Get, get to A-levels, yeah. That was that was my A-level journey. My animal experience hours, I think, let me, let me check. I use like this Google Sheet. I use this Google Sheet so to log in my experience hours. So what I volunteered at, I volunteered at SPCA's clinic in J1 when I was 17. I volunteered at a zoo for a bit 
one as a docent when I was 16 and, and one as a research volunteer when I was 17. I can go through my volunteer experiences in, an, in another video but yeah, basically I, work, I volunteer at Blah. So basically I volunteer at the Singapore Zoo and also at SPCA. Oh yeah, and I also link the Google Sheet in the description if I can still find it. I found it on a vet school blog somewhere like three years ago. I don't know if it's still up. But it was really useful for me to log in my hours. So in SBCA, I volunteered a total number of 204 hours. And in Singapore Zoo, I volunteered a total of 132 hours. Yeah, those are my stats. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying. See you guys in 2022 when I can upload more regularly and not be a lazy one.